Welcome to the KOV channel. We brought a box full of goodies and I'm happy to welcome you to one of the world's most renowned cigar lounges and shops. Gerald Genta and his Royal Oak are often praised for saving Audemars Piquet during the quartz crisis. Whilst it certainly contributed, we shall not underestimate the following trio. Wilfred Bernay, Jean-Daniel Golay and Michael Rochat. These heroes were respectively consisting of an after-sales manager, founder of the technical department and a watchmaker. They worked in secret on a very ballsy project. The result didn't only mark the history of Audemars, but made sure it was continued for many more years for us to enjoy. Welcome to the watch guide of the Audemars Piquet Canchem Perpetuel Classic. The story starts in the 1970s. As many watch lovers know, this was the most difficult decade as the market changed drastically and the demand for mechanical timepieces decreased quickly. Let alone complicated marvels. Yet Georges Golay, CEO of Audemars Piquet at that time, was pleasantly surprised when the trio presented the world's thinnest automatic perpetual calendar. In 1978, he launched the first batch that was immediately welcomed with high regard. The Canchem Perpetuel Classique established itself as the backbone of their collection during the next decade and a half. As were used of AP, they created quite small quantities with many varieties, therefore interesting to examine, which we have the pleasure to do here. We will look at many models and multiple refs side by side and discover the differences and similarities. First and foremost, the thickness of the case is of importance, being the thinnest self-winding perpetual calendar. It's coming in at a mere seven millimeters. Do note some varieties can measure up to a millimeter thicker. There are different case designs when it comes to the QP, like the Clover, also known as the Juggernaut, the Octagonal, or even one with 12 sides. But overall, the sizing is around 36 millimeters, my absolute sweet spot. It's interesting to note they used two different case constructions as they updated the case back correctors and bezel to increase waterproofness. The second generation of these cases were introduced gradually around the mid 80s. Early cases have more rounded lugs that gently interfere with the bezel, which happens to be higher than a bezel on the later examples. Last mentioned has a case back with a slope instead of heavily rounded towards the edge and the correctors were less extruding but more bolstered and thus protected by the case. On a rarer occasion, one could glance at the movement through the sapphire crystal case back on the reference 25661 for example. In all other aspects similar to the 25657, but due to the rarity it demands a premium as only 342 of these were produced. And depending on the period the case back engraving differed in font and positioning. Uh, same goes for the hallmarks by the way also depending the country it was delivered to. And out of over 5000 classic Contem Perpetuals most are made in yellow gold then followed by pink gold, then platinum, and only a few in white gold or even bicolor. Shown by records, they only opted for steel a handful of times. The current whereabouts of those are unfortunately unknown. As per usual, we will also highlight the crown. But we will keep it brief as there are many interesting features on this watch, yet the crown isn't necessarily one of them. Straightforward plain crown without a logo, but ripped for practical reasons. So this watch came on either an integrated bracelet in matching metal to the case or with a leather strap between the lugs with a width of 20 millimeters. In case of the last mentioned, due to the short lugs, the strap is very close to the case that therefore uses a recess to properly fit it. 
Whilst it is harder to adjust it to the right size, the integrated bracelet plays an exciting role on some models and shouldn't be considered less valuable, as is the case with some other dress watches with such bracelet constructions. Now on to the most interesting part in my humble opinion, at least the part that plays the biggest role in the value of the QP, the dial. The brand name can be found underneath the moon face at the 6 o'clock position and above automatic. Up top we can find the month indication. On the right side of the dial, the date, and on the opposite side of the dial, the day. Please note there is no leap year indication, even though the movement features this complication. Usually rather short applied stick markers are used that are as thin as the handset that displays merely the hour and minutes, no second hand. Before showing you some rare and extraordinary examples, we will dig into the regular opaline white dials in chronological order. All started with the REF 5548. This model is signed only with Swiss at the bottom up until 1982 when they changed it in Swiss mate. The subdial above that is an open semicircle until 1984 when a faint outline of a full circle is added. We can distinguish three different subdial constructions. Besides fully recessed or totally flat, there's a variety in between where only the center of the subs are lowered. Further differences in details are seen in the graphics and font. There are more or less series, possibly a hooked 7 and closed or open 9s. Lay dials have the capitalized A and P in the brand name at the 6 o'clock position on the dial. Now over to the more exotic dials. Part of the fun in collecting this highly important model lies within the many different dial variations. Some in very small quantities or even unique examples. A subtle variation can be found in the markers. Instead of the usual applied sticks, one can occasionally expect painted Arabic or Roman numerals. Gem set indices are most commonly found in a diamond adorned case and or bracelet. Another popular configuration is the open work dial, consisting of a sapphire crystal dial, often combined with the display case back. Different colors other than the white ones are rare too, like champagne, gray or salmon. Or how about a dial made out of mother of pearl? Blue is popular too, and are especially stunning when Tuscan. This motive is applied on the surface of the dial and can be seen in some QP Royal Oaks as well, like the one I'm wearing today in steel. But this is not the only decoration in relief used. Some pieces have the pleasure to feature the art of guilloche or engine turning in different patterns. Last, but definitely not least, is the movement. It is easy to forget what is the engine of this project with so many other aspects to enjoy. But once again, the thinnest automatic perpetual calendar ever. Caliber 2800 was born out of the 2120, which is the no date version of the 2121. Indeed, that time only movement that was also utilized in the first Royal Oaks, reference 5402. But it already saw light in some dressier pieces after Gégère Le Coultre completed production in the late 60s. Caliber 2800 has a free sprung Gyrum X balance wheel. A rotor supported by a circular reel and a suspended mainspring barrel. The degree of finishing and decorating depends on the period, reference, material and if it has a see-through case back. Make no mistake, they weren't unique in choosing this movement for an ultra-thin perpetual calendar. Don't forget about Vacheron Constantin's counterpart, for example. It is my intention to emphasize the historical importance of this model. Golai understood the significance straight away when he immediately launched 159 of these QPs. That might not sound like a lot, but this was about as much calendar wristwatches as AP produced in the previous half a century combined. And this in the midst of the quartz crisis nonetheless. And it came at a hefty price tag of 15,500 Swiss francs. For reference, that was around quadruple the price of a steel royal oak. In 15 years of production, they created 70 different models of the Canchem Perpetuel. Within these models, there are close to 200 variations designed by Jacqueline Demier. Even though possessing a different style, some even dubbed her as the female Gerald Genta. Whatsoever, all these varieties are one of the reasons it's so fun to explore and why they're gaining momentum with collectors. <music>
hope you enjoyed this watch guide of the Ulema Piquet Canchem Perpetual classic line. As you can see, I enjoyed myself for quite a while already and I might have triggered your inspiration to start your own collection or maybe just buy one. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you back on our next video on the KOV channel.